Okay. You ready? Okay. Matthew, it is wonderful to see you again. It's wonderful. been a while. Yes, it has. Nice to see you too. But uh, you're such a big favorite with Texans, as you well know, having spent some time in our state. Yeah, I did. And yeah. just right off the top, I have to congratulate you on The Lion King. Thank you. And the, you are the voice of the adult Simba the right. lion we see right behind you. As we you. see, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a fantastic picture. I guess everyone's yeah. telling you that. Yeah, they are. It's great. I'm, I'm very, I feel lucky to be uh, a little teeny part of it. You know, uh, I saw it the other night too. And uh, just right from the first moment, I was uh, thrilled and shocked at how beautiful and uh, the animation of it is, seems like a whole, the next level. I mean, uh, the opening sequence, I think, is phenomenal. Indeed it is. It yes. really sets the tone. I do say so. And after you see the opening sequence, you sit there saying, okay, guys, what are you going to do for an encore? You yeah, know? but it's all but like... But they do. Jeremy yeah. Irons is great in it. And every, all of, I just loved it. I just felt, you know, just watched the whole thing. I mean, uh, I laughed. Every, you know, everything. It's a really good movie, I thought. Indeed. I have wondered so many times, Matthew, an actor like yourself, when you're asked to do the voice in an animated feature, what must go through your mind? Because even if it's a major hit, you don't have the same kind of recognition that yeah. you would have doing the kinds of roles we've seen you do, where no. your face is seen and we hear your voice and all. So uh, tell me about the process, the thought process that you go through accepting this. Well, for me, I mean, I absolutely would would accept it because I, uh, I mean, there's no reason not to do it. I, I don't think that I'll be recognized in it, at, you know, I mean, some people might recognize my voice. Um, but, you know, I grew up on these things and I have uh, a niece and two nephews, you know, who, who I've had to go with them, you know, to see uh, Aladdin and all that. And uh, that I can be in one just just for their sake alone is fun to me, you know, that I can, uh, you know, I got to tell them while I'm doing the, the next one's about lions. And uh, they're like, really, really? What what about lions? What happens? And I said, I, I can't tell you, you know, and uh, <laughs> they're getting ready for the uh, premiere in New York that they'll get to go to, you know, at Radio City. So um, they're just like, I mean, they're, they're, they're over the moon with excitement. Was it difficult work? It was, it's fussy work, you know. It's, uh, they want every line to be a certain way, and they'll keep redoing it until they're happy. So a lot of scenes got done, it must have been done, you know, on four different occasions over the period of months, you know, the same scene with a few different lines or different line readings. And uh, they'll say, do line 14 again and give us like five variations or, so it's very technical. So th that part of the work is hard, but it's mostly a breeze. I mean, it's fun, you know, You're, it's like, uh, you know that the animator is going to be doing a lot of the work and you're just trying to provide a good you know, voice to the scene. So, uh, uh, and it's a, it's a pleasure, you know, it's very comfortable and it, you never work for very long hours. I, I love doing it. Are you there as several actors doing the scene or are all the lines kind of isolated? Isolated. I never met any of them. So I would be in a dark room with headphones on and behind the glass or the dozens of directors and producers and whatever they all are telling you what to do. And, uh, I mean, there's nothing natural about it, you know. It's as far away from doing a scene in a play as you, as you could get. Were there ever times when you just sort of felt bewildered? Because actors act and feed off one another. Right. Well, that's what you get taught. That's what gets beaten into you, you know, that you should do. And, and this, you can't really. So you just go with it, you know. You just, I just tried to get a sense of what the uh, director wanted the directors, you know, and uh, you're sort of acting with them, you know, because that's who you're feeding off of. And you just, I figure they know what they're doing and I just tried to catch what they wanted. The original concept of The Lion King was no music, as I understand it. Is that right? That's, yes, that's what I've read and that's what I've heard. I didn't know that. 
I cannot imagine this movie without music and songs. Yeah, yeah I love the music. Um, I didn't even know that, but uh, that must have been given the kibosh pretty soon, <laughs> yes, I would imagine. I think it was. But the whole thing, the whole process, they keep rewriting it and rethinking it. It changed a lot. The original story was fairly different, too. Particularly, uh, excuse me, it's a very exciting movie. Um, <laughs> particularly my character, Simba, you know, he, he did change. He was much more uh, cocky and uh, sure of himself kind of guy. And he gradually got more pensive and different kind of lion. You're going to be in the movie The Road to Wellville with right. Sir Anthony Hopkins. Right. Did you, had you already finished Lion King by the time you started that? No, I had done a lot of Lion King, uh, but I even had to do one session with Lion King while I was doing that. Uh, we were shooting in North Carolina and I had to drive to a uh, little recording studio and they recorded some lines there while I was on the phone, you know, with the gaggle of directors barking orders at me you know, literally over the phone, and then I would do it, and they'd he try to hear it over the phone and say, I think that's all right, we can't really hear it, try it a little different, you know, just do, do a lot of versions. So it sort of followed me everywhere. I, I did a little of it in New York, a little North Carolina, a little out here. You were just roaring all over the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about working with uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins. Well, he was... Uh, he's, like, perfect... He, he's, like, perfectly tempered... Uh, great actor i mean he he was sweet to everybody and also very um interested in everything like he likes different actors watching different styles and talking about it and he kept asking me about marlon brando you know and what was that like and how did he prepare and um i mean he really looks at you you, you he, he's a lovely man he's We've spoken since, too, so I hope to uh, remain friends with him because he's, uh, he's also, you're catching a guy who's on a, uh, you know, a peak of his career. Uh, I'm sure there would be many, but um, he's just on a good, good role. So, you, you know, it's like uh, acting, it's like sitting next to a guy at a crap table who's, uh, you know, raking in lots of chips. You know, you keep wanting to kind of pat him or something and... Were you in of awe him. of him at all? Yeah. I mean, uh, he's one of my favorite actors. And I had seen Remains of the Day right before we started, and I, which I thought was a magnificent performance. And uh, I've worked with a lot of people I'm in awe of, so I'm kind of getting used to being in awe, you know? And I dare say there are a lot of actors who are in awe of you, Matthew Broderick, and they will be even more so, I think, after they see The Lion King. Again, it's great to see you. I hope you get back to Texas to see us real soon. Yeah, me too. And uh, I just think uh, you are a part of a film that's uh, an epic and will be around forever and ever. Yeah, that's Snow pretty White. exciting. Isn't that great? Thanks. Thank you.